today we're going to continue learning about color. So the first step is to download the file. You're going to find it just below this video in the description area. Just click the link and then open it. For open it, remember to go to file and then click where it says open right here. I prefer using shortcuts and the shortcut is command O or control O if you have a PC. So pause the video if you, in case you need it and let's continue. Color is really important in, lately in our days because they share messages, you know. Depending on the trends, usually um, colors have a special meaning. Sometimes they can share happiness, sadness. Sometimes they have strength. Sometimes they calm you down, you know. And that's why when we select a color for a project, we have to consider not only the specific meaning that it has in a, in a culture, it has, we have to consider who is the one that is going to receive the message and why do they have th that specific preference for the color. Now, for this specific exercise, we're going to focus in four areas, the toolbar, the upper menu, colors and swatch. In case you don't have these two open, remember that you can open them where it says window, color, and then we have this option um, color and gradient, okay? Color, swatch and gradient. Now, why do we have this one? Well, we're going to start doing some transformation. How can we get color? There are different ways. The first one, come to the toolbar on the left side, double click it, and you're going to have this window open. We're going to see that we have five options to select color. One of them is just by clicking here. For example, this one looks like the peach, you know, Pantone color that is, was selected this year. We have the hue saturation balance, RGB, that means red, green, and blue. The one that at the bottom means hex color, love color, and the process color, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. We even have this option, the eyedrop, that is going to help us to select the color. Now, as you can see, once I selected this, they are asking me to record it. Just let me select deny. If you want to select a specific color from a picture or from an um, illustration that you just pasted to InDesign, this is how you're going to get it with the eyedrop, okay? Now, how can you get the color? Once you have selected the color that you like, for example, this one, it reminds me of Cancun. You just have to, um, to click Add, Cyan, Magenta, Yellow and Black Swatch, and automatically it's going to appear in this window that is called Swatches, okay? when you click it here. Let's take a look. And it's just right here, as you can see. Okay, it's the one that is just below. Now, this is one way to get color. Just by selecting the color that you prefer, uh, that is, you know, from your preference and that you say like, I like that one and it's going to work for my specific project. And then click it here and it's going to be saved in the swatch window. That is one way by selecting like double clicking here. We can do the same thing right here at the top menu. As you can see, the options are the same one. And the other way is by using the swatch window. Now, this is important because, for example, I'm going to select this. If I have an object, how am I going to define the stroke color or the fill color? Remember that the one that is fill up is for fill and the one that has like um, a middle, you know, that is empty, that means that it's a stroke. If I want to change the color white, I can select any of the options that are available here, but in case in case I want more colors than are here, you know, that because they're kind of limited, we're going to learn how to get more colors. But first, let's see how we can select for the inside or for the outside. If you click to this arrow, you're going to be changing the position between red and blue. And of course, in this case, they're going to tell you that the fill color is red and the, the stroke color is going to be blue. Now I'm going to select this one and I'm going to change it into yellow so you can see. Now, if we want to change the color of a text, we have to be aware that the text has to be selected. I already right now selected the text. You see that it says open type font, but hmm, it doesn't show me here at T. So maybe what I am selecting here, if, in case I want to move it, is the frame of the text. So if I apply color, let's say mm, white, 
the box or the frame is going to be filled up with color. So if I want, I'm going to undo, Command Z. If I want to change the color, let me, something happened here, ah, there you are. If I want to change the color, I have to double click it and then I have to be aware that here it says T and I'm going to be capable to select the color that I want. So if you want to change a specific color, let me see, instead of white, I'm going to place it in black. Okay. Now for objects that are imported or icons that are downloaded from the web, it's really easy because you can just select here and change the color of your preference, okay? Now, we're going to do some gradients, but not right now. Let me just make this one a little bit smaller and here you go. Now, if you want to edit something like this or this, remember that you can edit any object, but it's going to be limited. It's not like full of surprises like Illustrator. If you want to edit the photo, use Photoshop. Now, if you want to get more colors like the ones that we have right here or the ones that I have just right here, how you're going to get them. We have seen that you can double click it here and then start looking for a color, or maybe you want to create them create them by combining, you know, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. How can you do that? Let's go where it says swatch, this window, click it. Then click where it says new color swatch. Here you're going to be capable to name it with a color value. That means that depending on the percentage of the color is how you're going to create a new color. Cyan is going to be the bluish, magenta is going to be the pink color, yellow is yellow, and black is black. I bet you have seen it in the printers that you have at home or when you go to Office Max, Office Depot, okay? Now, these four colors are called process color, are the ones that are used in printing, okay? If you are going to print something, this is the color mode that you're going to use, color mode. Now, there are different color modes, as you can see here. In the past, there was another one, in the past it's just like, three or four months ago, okay? There was something that was called Pantone. Pantone is a company that create special inks for companies. They were usually used for defining the brands, for example, or for defining some colors that can be printed by using process color, like metallic color like this. As a designer, I have to buy these books and I have to buy the license to use it in the computer. They changed it in October last year, if I'm not wrong, October 2023. Now, why is Pantone important for us designers? Well, they usually define a unique color for our brand. And usually when you select a color, let me show this to you. In the computer, they look super, super bright. But when you print it, ooh, the color changes. I know and I am sure that you have seen it before. So the Pantone was selling you the promise that the color that you see is going to be the same one in Europe, Asia, or America, okay? The other ones that you see right here, they're just other brands, okay? That doesn't mean they're worse or they're not so good. They're just other brands. It's like Android and uh, all the different Androids that are available in the market. Now, something that is important for us in communication and design is the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, because if we're going to print a book or a magazine, that's the color mode that we're going to use, and RGB. RGB is red, green, and blue. This is important because the combination of these three colors are the ones that manage light in your screen, in your computer, tablet, phone, okay? Let me just show you how. If you don't have any red, green, and blue, there is no light, so everything becomes black, as you can see here. But if you put 100%, 255 of red, 200 of yellow, and 200 in blue, you have white, you know? The colors become brighter. Now, I will hope that for you it's better to combine it doing this, you know, the red, green, and blue. But as we have learned since we were a child, Usually we use acrylic paint or watercolor, so we know that when we combine blue and yellow, we have green. When we combine a little bit of red and blue, we get purple. Remember that? Well, it works the same way with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, not exactly with red, green, and blue. Now, one important thing that you have to see here, let me just put spot, is that you can name it. 
here. For example, in this case, I'm going to name it Kermit the Frog. Now, if you see this, it's telling you that gamut warning. That means that, hey, probably it's going to change. Depending on the computer, the screen, depending if you're going to print it, the tone, you know, this bright color is going to be different. I'm going to click Add. So it's going to be saved here and done. This is a good thing about the software. As I just mentioned before, it tells you if you're doing any mistake or anything that is not good, and they're going to, to give you like a warning about it. Let me click here, Kermit. And here I have my green color. Now, let me go again to the swatch window. What else do we have? We have the tint. Let me click this one. Tint is going to get me a percentage of the color that I selected. It's like if I have black, gray is a tint from black, okay? So it's defined from zero to 100. If I'm going to get a percentage of this one and I'm going to add it here, you're going to see that is 52% of that green. It's going to be more transparent, but it's like the intensity of the color that you're going to see. Now, let's see. An example right here, I'm going to do a rectangle so we can take a look to it. So this is the 100% color. I'm going to duplicate it. And this is the 52. It doesn't mean that it's going to be transparent. It's just not that strong. Okay, let's go back here. If you don't want to do it, new tint swatch. Remember that just by selecting the color in the, at the right, you can select, for example, the percentage that you want. If you want to make it transparent, it's a different thing. How can you make it more transparent? At the top, you have this option, this one. That's going to help us to make it more transparent and you're going to be capable to see what's just, at, uh, just below, okay? Or at the bottom. Now, again, let's come here. So we have the new color swatch, the new tint. How about the new gradient? Gradient is a combination of one or more colors, two or more colors, okay? Now, how can you get the colors that you want? I'm going to delete the ones that I was, you know, the practice I was doing before the video. It works like a, we've seen in Illustrator. That means that once you click in this line, you're capable to add more than one color. By just double clicking it, you're capable to select the color that you want. For example, I'm going to select here yellow and I'm going to put pink in the middle, like this. I'm going to name it rainbow, rainbow bright. And I'm going to click add. Automatically, it's going to be saving my color swatch. And as you can see, as I have the objects right here selected, it's going to be applied, even though the tint is in in 100%, I just change here the opacity. Let me change it into 100. Okay, now the gradient can be applied to the inside and can be applied to the outside. I don't know if you can see that right here. I have gradient for the stroke and gradient for the fill. I'm going to change the weight of this one so you can see how it looks. The other one was made previously, okay? And of course, you can change it. Remember that the position and orientation of the color, it depends on you, the designer. So if you want to change like maybe the pink outside and this one inside, you just have to click the arrow that is right here, as you have seen here. Another way to add creating color is by going to the toolbar and clicking this one, double click, and you're going to see two different available uh, ways of applying gradient, liner and radial. Now, in InDesign, uh, they're limited, as you can see, but in Illustrator, they have three, and in Photoshop, they have five, six. So remember, InDesign is more for publishing magazines, books, electronic publications. It's not for doing something creative. It's like placing all the elements together, okay? And you can select, for example, the, the type that you prefer. And the gradient offer is going to be depending on the object that you're selecting, okay? That's why it looks so awful here. Let me change it here. It looks much better, right? I'm going to put the gradient here. Remember that you always can grab a window and place it in your workspace. The next one. We have mixed ink. Let's click it. 
Here, for example, is when you're going to be mixing um, the process colors with something extra. Now, why this is important? Um, as I just mentioned, when you're creating a brand and you want everyone to recognize you, let's see if we can see an example on the web. So maybe you all recognize Tiffany, right? And if I'm not wrong, it's part of one of the lessons that you're supposed to read. Now, this color is only for the use of Tiffany. Let me see if it's going to be working or not. Something is going on with Chrome. It's taking time. Well, now for the Tiffany color, it's a special color that was developed just for them. Now, if it's not working, Let's put Pantone color, Tiffany, sorry. Here you have it. Now, the, the particular thing of this color is that it was creating in 1837 because Tiffany, that's the number it has because it's the year Tiffany was founded. You can't find it in a Pantone ruler like this. Remember, this is not the one that you get in Home Depot. This is for designers, the Pantone ruler. And one another important thing is that once you see it, you recognize the brand. That's why it's so important. For example, if we talk about Mexican brands, if we say Palacio Hierro, you always recognize the yellow. If we say Liverpool, you always recognize the pink color. That's why Pantone used to be so important. Now, let's go back to InDesign. You can make a combination of different colors. Let me place it here. And da -da 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 -da. this combination, wherever we sit, this is a mixed ink. The result is this one. It was not so nice. Remember that I included cyan, yellow, and the green. Let me duplicate this one so you can see the different color. Ooh, not so good, right? It's a, another way to get new colors. Now, it's up to you how much you know about combination of colors. If you paint in the past before, for example, you're going to be, it's going to become easier for you. Now, maybe this is not the color that you like. I'm going to make it again here. I'm going to select this and this. Probably by selecting this, I'm going to have red. And let me get it here. And I'm going to get orange. Let's see if it's true. Here you see the color that is going to be resulting. So maybe this one goes like this. The result is going to be in this spot. If I put a little bit of black, I can get brownish color. And if I add it, I don't mix ink switch, but contain at least two inks. One spot. This is a spot ink. Hmm. Olive. And there you have the orange. Yuck. Let me <laughs> place it here. And then I just have to change because I was doing it wrong. There you have it. So this is how you can get color by mixing with the options that we have right here. Now you can make groups. This is like how you're going to organize the colors that you have in your document. For example, if you want for page number one, you are going to use some specific colors. In page number two, you're going to use another specific colors. Okay. And uh, what else? Duplicate swatch. That's easy to understand. Let's see what else I can share with you. So swatch. We're talking about ink. Remember that this is available at the same time here where it says tint. Okay. Tint is like the percentage that you're going to be of color. And the last thing, but not the least that we have to learn about how do you combine colors with the special effects is the following thing. Remember that we are in InDesign. That means that some tools that are available in Illustrator and Photoshop are available here as well. But the effect is going to be limited. That means that if you're going to use an effect that is commonly used in Photoshop, the object is going to be treated like a bitmap. If you use an effect that is commonly used in Illustrator, the effect is going to be used as a vector. So I'm going to select this one first. So we can see the result. Let me get closer to it. Take a look at it. And we're going to go to the top menu, Object. And we're going to select Effect and drop Shadow. You have seen this before. It is part of Photoshop when you are in working with layers. Okay. 
what I have done is to create this shadow that you see right here. Multiply is going to define like a special a mode of blending, if it's going to be transparent, if it's going to be hard, rush, and uh, example overlay is going to make it wider, if it's going to make it darker. Usually multiply it makes it look more real because it's going to be, you know, something floating and over the picture in this case. Opacity is how transparent you want it. If you have it in 100, it's going to become really, really dark. And this is going to make it like more transparent. The distance is the separation that you're going to have, you know, from the object that you're applying the shadow. And the size, how big and blurred do you want it? If you want it to be more marked, usually it's going to become closer to zero. But if you want it to be more blur, you're going to get away from zero. Once you have it, it's a good option to have the preview check so you can take a look at what you're doing. Okay, so I created like this small um, drop shadow, but there are other effects. I'm going to select now this icon. I'm going again to object. In case you don't want to go to the top menu, remember that when you click the mouse in the second button, you're capable to get new tools or the same ones that are in the top. So in this case, I just click the button and I'm going to select effect, bevel and emboss. It's going to give me this volume effect, you know, like if it has a volume and, you know, lights and shadows, you always can play with the depth that you want. If you don't want it to look more real, for example, the angle that you want to change, for example, for the, for the lights and shadows, the direction, if you want it up and down, I believe that it looks much better in up. And if I want it soft, yeah. Maybe smooth it looks much better. And um, there are other stuff like inner shadow is instead of having the outside is inside outer glow is going to give me this glow outside. Setting is going to give me this texture. Let me get closer to it so you can take a look to it. Um, here it goes without setting. So you can start transforming and all these effects are the ones that come from Photoshop. My suggestion will be to apply them and keep them in the same size. That's why I'm getting too close. You see that now it looks pixelated. So if you make it this bigger, it's going to look terrible. So avoid doing that. Remember that everything that uh, has a connection with bitmap has to be used in the exact size it was created. If you try to enlarge it, it's going to distort and it's going to be distorted and it's going to look not exactly good. And uh, well, this is how we can control colors, for example, and some special and cool effects. Now, just because um, I am into good mood, I'm going to share with you something that Illustrator has, but is not too evident. And here in InDesign is like, oof. If we come to this area, the top menu, when you have the object already selected and it has a stroke, remember it has to, have, it needs to have a stroke. You can change the corners of any frame, especially if it's a rectangle. Okay. This is not going to be capable with a circle because it's a circle, so, but you can modify it like this. You can make it round and so on. And in case you don't like to use the upper menu, Remember, you can come here and change it here where it says corner options. And if you don't like that, remember that you can come here and change it. Almost, almost, not always, all the options that are here are available here. But in this case, let me see corners. Corners is not available. So, uh, the last but not least, just let me, because I saw this, I'm going to delete I'm going to put them outside. Let me place them here, okay? Okay, so we have a photo. The photo that I gave you um, is blocked. If you can see that here is a photo, you can unlock it by clicking here. When you are capable to select this, it's because it's available. We have something that can help us, for example, to define and get the colors. So when we have the photo selected, please click it, extract from image, 
color themes. This is going to help us to define a, a palette for a design in case you want to use, for example, text and graphics in some specific colors. Next. They're sharing with me five different types of colors. The good thing is that yet you can move it. For example, in this case, I don't like that blue. I prefer this one. In case of this brown, because it's too dark, I want this one. And then you can save this and um, in your libraries, if you are using Creative Cloud, you can select the colorful, the bright, the deep, the dark or none. For example, if I click bright, the, bright, the colors are going to become brighter, mute, darker, you're capable to select the colors that are available in those in this picture and the color theme is good because sometimes when you do a mood board you can show the colors and it's going to define a specific style and this is good well i believe it's, it's good for you if you are in design and as you can see it's already saved in my case i pay for the license i'm not using the one that is available at the school because i'm a graphic designer and it's going to be saved in you know with others in color adobe adobe color i don't know if you have if you remember that one just in case you need it i believe it's a good time for me to share it with you if you type down color adobe in the past used to be not a name as cooler you can create color palettes you can see some color palettes created by other people let me close this one you can see for example you, uh, you can use depending a ruler like complementary colors, monochromatic colors. How can I get them? By clicking this area. Let me move my floating face. Here you have it. And here you can have a um, color palette. As you can see, they're using the hex color. That means this digital color. You're capable to edit it. Okay, just by pressing it with the mouse. And here you have it to the library and you can see some inspiration of the trends. Now, today is 2024. Let's go to the trends so we can see what is trendy here in Europe. So as you can see, the colors that are selected that are inspired from a specific picture in graphic design, illustration, and so on. Today I was walking in the street and I saw that Phospho is coming back. You know, fluorescent colors is coming back. And why did I mention it? Because it reminds me of Phospho colors. Okay. So remember that Trends are good because they're going to last in a specific time, but in design we usually believe that it has to long, last for a long time. I mean, imagine if the creator of Tiffany Color was like, oh, it's going to work only for 20 years. Nobody will remember the brand and we want people to remember us and to love us. So let's go back to InDesign. We're not going to save it, but this is how you can get the, um, the color theme of a specific picture by using InDesign. You can do the same thing in Illustrator. But it's good because somehow you can always get to this and use the colors and, uh, you know, make the combination that you need for a specific project. Well, I hope this um, video works for you. In case of doubt, let me know. Write me an email, send me a WhatsApp, whatever works better for you. See you later.